Hi, AP Art students. We are uh, coming to the end of this quarter, and it is our final assignment. And this assignment is uh, about all about appropriation. So some of you may be familiar with this word um, and this idea. Um, but the idea is that you are recycling images and specifically in the case of the art world sometimes recycling images from art history so the point is um, using that and putting it into a new context so that people look at it in a different way of course it's a little bit controversial it sounds a lot like plagiarism borrowing something that's already existed or maybe quoting somebody without giving them the proper citation but the practice has been around for a long time, as you'll see here. And the idea would be uh, behind it that sometimes we don't necessarily need to be original to be innovative or creative in terms of trying to communicate with others. So it really links up with artists who are interested in the message behind the work as opposed to perhaps the craft of making the work. So this would be the kind of work that people who are interested in ideas or people who are interested in instrumentalism, if you remember that from way back when, um, would be very interested in, as well as those who are interested in institutionalism, like manipulating the art world and getting people to think about art in a different way. So let's look at an example. This is perhaps one of the most famous, Marcel Duchamp takes an icon, right? Everybody knows the Mona Lisa, everybody knows that Marcel Duchamp did not make it takes a poster of this and quickly adds a mustache. And all of a sudden, this symbol of perhaps beauty or love or mystery or intrigue, or maybe even if we look at this as like a symbol of the art world itself um, and being an icon itself, he defaces it, right? So he's challenging our assumptions about the art world, you know, about things that we value. He's kind of taken um, a shot at people who think of art as something that begins with a capital A and maybe takes itself too seriously. Or maybe he's playing with gender roles here, right? Like um, being uh, trans, you know, back in the 1920s um, could have been something that would have been very scandalous, uh, as you can imagine. Um, so I'll let you figure out the letters on your own. But that's kind of one of these examples. Like he didn't create the Mona Lisa, but by changing this one thing on the Mona Lisa and changing the title, he has a whole new piece that has people feeling passionately about it. So an expressionist would look at it and be like, oh my gosh, that makes me angry or that makes me laugh or what have you. Um, he gets us to think about the art world. He gets us to think about what the Mona Lisa is. He gets us to think about gender roles. He changes everything with just a simple, clever maneuver. Well, you say, oh, that's cheating, Mr. Walter. You know, like anybody could do that. Um, but is it really? You know, here we have two very famous paintings, one by Michelangelo, The Birth of Adam, in the lower left there. And then The Calling of St. Matthew by uh, Giovanni Michelangelo Caravaggio, an equally famous artist from uh, the Baroque time period. Take a look at what um, Caravaggio has done with the hand of St. Matthew right here. Of course, I positioned myself in the right spot there, didn't I? But he's clearly borrowing from here to come up with this. And of course, this image itself, we see it in advertising, we see it all over the place. So it's not like this hasn't been done before. It's just that when we got to like the 1950s and 60s, artists started doing it more deliberately. So we had artists like Elaine Stru Sturt Devant, uh, uh, part of my my apologies uh pronunciation is always tough um so the piece on the left looks a lot like an andy warhol print as a matter of fact that's all it really is is just a copy complete copy of an andy warhol print piece on the right she um you know embedded her image into this wanted poster with this uh, uh kind of comical uh 
side to it because she was, you know, enraging people by stealing art, but of course asking people the question, is it enough for it to be beautiful? You know, if we all assume that it's beautiful when it's done by Andy Warhol and I do the exact same thing, isn't it still beautiful? So maybe originality is more important than we thought it was, or maybe craftsmanship and you know aesthetic visual beauty isn't as important. And by raising those questions, she challenged the art world and made a lot of people frustrated at the same time. But that's kind of the beginning of appropriation, right? Like it goes beyond that. People do more with it now than just steal an image. But as a way of making a name for herself and calling these you know, issues into question, she certainly was very influential. Uh, I keep moving myself and then having trouble moving this around. Um, so here we have uh, an artist from the 60s and 70s who's associated with both appropriation, but also um, uh, the feminist art movement and or the equal rights um, movement, you would say. Barbara Kruger um, did a whole bunch of interesting things. So I'll be brief. Um, but uh, one of the things that relates to appropriation is she would find images of women or things that you would see in advertising and use those. So the whole idea of like, is this her image? You know, if all she does and what she would do is add some words to the image that already existed, you know, that was there. And then she would publish them, um, which was a way of getting her work out there without having to get it into galleries, which in and of itself is kind of an innovative way of thinking about how to be an artist. Um, her images often deal with feminism here. Um, so this piece, Your Body is a Battleground, was originally published and then made into a billboard. And this was after she had some notoriety. And of course, once the word was out that this was going to be a billboard, um, the whole people who were on the other sides of the abortion rights issue um, put up images of a, a fetus um, right next to it. So she has this huge impact. Um, but that photograph not being taken by her is the appropriation part. Uh, and of course, there were people who questioned that about her work as well. Whenever you see a you in her work, she's talking about men. Whenever you see an I in her work, it's typically talking about women. Um, uh, and like, I, I, I sometimes find what she does just, you know, hilarious. Like uh, it's a small world unless you have to clean it. I think it's pretty darn funny. Let's see if I get to the next slide here. Of course not. Well, let's see. Oh, good. I'm in a good spot this time. Richard Prince is another one of these notorious guys. I believe he's English, um, part of the new British artist movement. Um, became famous for doing a lot of things that called into question these same ideas of originality. Some more recent things that he's done is taken people's Instagram posts um, where they're putting it out there onto the World Wide Web, right, um, into social media, and then publishing them in this large format as like his portraits of people um, and selling them for money. People say, well, that was my post. And he's like, yeah, but, you know, like I made it great by recognizing it. Um, another series that he did that also was controversial, these uh, man crazy nurses where you take romance novels and either paint the female lead into a uniform or add a female lead in a nurse's uniform um, and, uh, you know, paint out some of the other characters that are in there. Um, so he's painting over published material, but changing it, making it his own at the same time, making nurses pretty frustrated as well. Interesting reading for a few of those of you, but it doesn't always have to be controversial. I know Jane Perkins takes classic images. Um, this is another Warhol, um, and recreates them out of everyday items, right? Like, a banana and we kind of see letters in there and kind of like a hobby craft store bead fest going on. So she's just presenting it to us with a different medium, um, which maybe talks about like how we think about those kinds of things um, as well. Um, or here we have uh, Erica Iris Simmons, who has got some uh, 
followers online for her uh, drawings where she uses things that are being discarded, like cassette tapes in particular. Um, here's John Lennon um, with an old cassette tape. Um, I think there was a Bruno Mars video with her in it. So anyway, what do you have to do? What I want you to do this week is I want you to look at famous images from art history or perhaps from other areas, okay? um, like advertising or pop culture or something like that. But I think art history is going to be important to me. So I want to see your image first. Um, I, I don't want you just picking up like a... Uh, Tide packet and you know saying that this is about global warming because it says the word tide in it i want something a little bit more in researched um there so we want to look at artists who are dealing with the issues that you're dealing with steal an image from them okay, and see what you can do with it to make it your own either by changing the materials or changing the context within which it is presented but somehow find a way to make people look at it differently or make it your own image. So that is the task for the week and the strong. I'll see you later.